Good morning, my precious brothers and sisters. You know, we love you guys. We appreciate you. Trust God. He knows what he is doing. Just put your trust in him. Put your faith in him. He knows what he's doing. Morning Prayer with Pastor Sean Pinder. Oh, come on, sing it to him this morning. God is a good God. Yes, he is. He's a great God. He can do anything but fail. He has moved so many mountains. Come on. Out of my way. And God is a wonderful God. Oh, God is a good God. He is a great God. He is a great God. He can do anything but fail. He has moved so many mountains and out of my way. Cause God is a wonderful God. Oh, God is a good God. He is a great God. He can do anything but fail. He has moved so many mountains. How? Of my way, cause God is a wonderful. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we're about to go into the word of God on this morning, speak to your people, minister to them, encourage them, lift every burden that's on their shoulder, I pray. Touch them, heal them, deliver them, set them free, give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, make it so simple that even a small child can understand the word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, on this morning, this is what the Holy Ghost gave me to share with you. Trust God. He knows what he is doing. Now listen, somebody needs to hear that word this morning. You know, the Holy Ghost don't just waste time. God doesn't just waste time. When God speaks, he speaks with purpose and his timing is perfect. Are you hearing me? Listen to this. We're going into the book of 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 9 through 16. The Bible says, so Naaman, Naaman was a warrior. He was the captain over the army in Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but Naaman had leprosy. Are you listening to me? He had leprosy. And Naaman's servant girl that he had captured from out of Israel when he was making a raid, Naaman's servant girl said to Naaman, I wish you could go to Israel because if you could get to Israel, the man of God by the name of Elisha the prophet, he would be able to cure you of your leprosy through the power of God. God works through him to heal sickness and diseases. So the Bible says, Naaman followed the advice of a little slave girl. You got to be careful how you treat people. Because everybody has something to offer. Naaman was about to get a big miracle in his life because of a slave girl who served his wife. You got to be careful how you treat people because you don't know who God is going to use to help facilitate your miracle. My dad had a saying. He said, son, be careful how you treat people. You just never know when you're going to need them. Now watch this. So Naaman followed the instructions of a slave girl. This blows my mind. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Now watch this. And Elisha did not even come out to greet Naaman. It's amazing how God will test a person's pride to see how hungry you are for a miracle, to just see how serious you are about what you claim you want God to do for you. Listen to verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in the Jordan River seven times. And if you do this, your flesh shall come again to thee 
and you will be clean. Your leprosy will be gone. You'll be like a new man. But Naaman was angry and went away and said, behold, watch this now. This is where we get into trouble. I thought, that's where we get into a mess right there. I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover me from this leprosy. So because Naaman had to hear that Elisha prayed over people and laid hands on them and called on the name of the Lord and they were healed, Naaman automatically had a preconceived idea of how God was going to heal him and give him his miracle. But I got bad news for some of you this morning. I have bad news and good news. You can't tell God how to do it. He is God all by himself. Are you listening to me? You can't tell God how to heal you. One blind man, Jesus laid hands on him. Another blind man, Jesus spit on the ground and made clay and put it in his eyes and said, go wash. In other words, let someone take you down to the river. And he went and washed and he received his sight. Are you listening to me? Look at some of the lepers. Christ said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they were on their way, obeying the Lord Jesus, their leprosy vanished. You can't tell God how to do it. God have a million ways on how he can give you a miracle. Are you listening to me? And so Naaman was about to miss his moment and his opportunity because he had a preconceived idea on how God was going to heal him. And this is why a lot of people, not all, but some people, miss their miracle because they have a preconceived idea on how God is going to give it to them, how God is going to do it, how God is going to heal them, how God is going to answer their prayer, how God is going to give them the provision, or oh, be I'm believing God for this job. But when that particular job don't work out, they are heartbroken and want to throw the towel in. Wait a minute. Didn't you tell God not your will? Didn't you say, God, not my will, but your will be done? Well, how is it that you want to tell God how to, how to do it in your life? You got to just surrender. Listen, the place of surrender is the beginning of miracles. Are you listening to me? When you surrender and say, God, I give up. I'm not going to do this in my own strength. And you say, God, you be God. Once you know you've done everything you can, it's time to just let go and let God have his way. Now watch this. But Naaman was angry and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come and lay hands on me and call on God and recover me from my leprosy. Listen to what he said. Are not a banner and far par rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? So he was upset that Elisha told him, Go dip in the dirty Jordan River and God is going to heal you. Listen to what else he said. May I not wash in these other rivers that's in Damascus? May I not wash in them and be made whole? So he turned and went away in a rage. This guy's angry. Elisha didn't even come out to greet him. Look, when you come to God, you got to come like a little child. This, this have nothing to do. This have nothing to do with your caliber. This have nothing to do with your big name and your title. God can care less who you are. He is God all by himself. He is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. And when you come to God, Jesus say, unless you come as a child, you will in no way inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch this. So his servants who had good sense and good discernment, his servants, verse 13, came there and spoke unto him and said, my father, this is what they said to Naaman. If the prophet had asked you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? How much, how much complicated is it for you to do this simple thing that he's asking you to do? Wash and be clean. You see, this is where people are defeated in their mind because they have preconceived ideas on how God is going to answer their prayer. They're convinced that that particular woman are called to be their wife. That husband, that man is called to be their husband. And when it don't work out, they get all heartbreaking and want to turn their back and forsake God and not be a Christian anymore. Wait a minute, this ain't about you. This ain't about what you want. This ain't about what you want for your life. God knows best. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights with whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. The Bible says as for God, all his ways are perfect. He is perfect. Are you listening to me? God don't make no mistakes. So you can't tell God how to do it. Trust God. He knows what he's doing. Now watch this. So after his servants rebuked him pretty much 
and counsel him and let him know, look, you're making a mistake, man. This ain't about you. This is about you humbling yourself and just doing what you are told. You, you, you're in the front of a prophet, man. You ain't nothing right now. God is talking through this man. Now watch this. Verse 14 says, Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River, according to the saying of the man of God. And when he went down the seven times, glory to God, we can preach right from there. When he went down the seven times, his flesh came again like under the flesh of a little child, and he was completely clean. He was healed of his leprosy. So you got to understand God, the Bible says in Isaiah, God's ways are higher than our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than ours. Are you listening to me? God's not going to always do it the way you want. Look, I've learned that when God don't do it the way I want, you know what I end up saying? You know what, God? I surrender and forgive me for wanting to do it my way. Because God, you know best. God cares about you. Are you listening to me? So the Bible says, and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but here in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray you, take a blessing of that servant. He wanted to give Elisha, he wanted to give Elisha a chunk of money, but you can't buy a miracle from God. But he said, listen to what Elisha said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive none of it. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And this is why Elisha refused it. It was not God's will. It's, it's simple. Amen. Money is not a sin, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Are you listening to me? Man, some people would have dove on that. And Elisha did not take it because this man was a foreigner and he would he, he think that he can, he can just pay God for a miracle. No, you can't buy a miracle from God. A miracle comes because of your obedience, because you love God with all of your heart. Are you listening to me? Because you're willing to humble yourself like a little child. You cannot buy a harvest from God. God don't even need your money. He just requires you to pay tithe to prove to him that you trust him. God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Are you hearing me? Elisha turned it down. That's what I'm talking about. He was more interested than this man getting right with God. And there's some more I can preach from here, but time would not allow me to because Elisha's servant got greedy for the money and ran after Naaman and lied to get the money and he ended up being cursed with Naaman's leprosy. Are you listening to me? It was not time for Elisha to receive money. There's a time to receive gifts and there's a time to turn them down. Are you listening to me, saints? And remember, you got to trust God because he knows what he is doing. Do not make the mistake that Naaman almost, Naaman almost missed his miracle because he thought it had to be done a certain way. Only God knows how you going to get your miracle. Only God knows exactly how he's going to work the thing out. You got to trust him. He knows what he is doing. My God, my God, my God. The Holy Ghost talking to some of you. I said the Holy Ghost is talking to some of you. And some of you have, you've been just getting impatient. Some of you are even angry at God. You notice, I'm not really hollering and preaching. I just felt like God wanted me to pull back and talk to you. I'm talking to someone. You have been frustrated because you were convinced. You, notice how I'm saying it. You were convinced that God was going to do it this way. But he didn't do it that way and now you mad at God. But I want to say this, you are in error because he is God. He knows what's best for you. You got to trust him because he knows what he's doing. He loves you. He cares about you. Listen, if God didn't answer that prayer at the time you thought he should, he knows what he's doing. He knows what's best. He knows that you probably wasn't ready or he knows that what you were asking for, it might have been bad for you. It may not be bad for you later, but right now it would have probably destroyed your life. He knows best. Father, I cover your people this morning in the blood of the Lord Jesus. I give myself away. I cover your people in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for giving us patience. Thank you for giving us joy, giving us hope. Thank you for instructing us when we are wrong. Because your word says, whom you love, you correct God, I thank you for just comforting your people this morning and lifting that frustration 
and rebuking the lies that the devil is telling them that God don't care about you God don't love you God didn't heal you when you want him to God didn't answer the prayer when you want him to God don't care nothing about you the devil is a liar he is the father of all lies he is a liar say that I rebuke you from out of their ears I rebuke you you lying spirit I curse that frustration from off of God's people I bind it in the name of Jesus I release the love of God and the joy of the Holy Ghost in your life be patient my friend they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not faint God is on your side but he is going to work it out in his time because he is God I want you to be encouraged this morning. Be encouraged. He cares about you. God's heard your cry. The answer for your prayer is on the way. But you got to let God do it in His time. Most people mess up right here. It didn't happen the way they think it should happen. And they storm out, get mad at God, and go do something stupid. Some of you are in trouble right now because you didn't wait on God. You thought he should have done it one way and you went to go make it happen for yourself and now you are in a mess and you need to repent before God. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to turn away. You need to just come clean. Some people end up in awful marriages, awful relationships, terrible business deals, terrible jobs because they did not wait on God. They ran ahead of God and got themselves in a mess. But he's a merciful God and willing to give you another chance. I want you to pray after me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me. For, I'm talking to Christians right now. Forgive me for becoming impatient and doing my own thing. Now I'm having to deal with all these consequences. If I were to listen to you, God, I would not have this marriage that I'm in. I would not have to be here taking care of this child by myself. You told me he was no good. Come on, just repent before God. Come clean. God is going to help you, but you need to acknowledge your sin. Just quit covering it up. J just come clean with God. This is how God deals with me. You know, I have to come clean with God. When I get into a mess that I know I caused, I have to come clean and say, you know what, God? Man, I'm wrong. Forgive me wash me in your blood and I'm a preacher but I ain't perfect and I got to be an example to you and this is why I tell you how God deals with me because if you see how God deals with me and if I'm real and if I'm pure and if I come and just tell you the truth it's gonna help you be it's gonna help you more it's gonna help you to be a better child of God just come clean say God I brought this on myself but you know what even though you brought it on itself the Bible says his mercies are new every morning he loves you and he cares about you Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but he who confesses his sins and forsakes them will find mercy. And now for some of you who have never given your life to Jesus, I want you to pray and say, Lord Jesus, just pray after me. It's time for you to surrender your life to Christ. The way of a transgressor is hard. That's someone who knows to do good and doesn't do it. You just keep refusing to, to surrender your life to Jesus and you just keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Your life just keep getting messed up and more messed up and more messed up. It's time to surrender. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I'm tired of running, God. Cleanse me. Wash me in your blood. I repent. I turn away from sin. I turn away from the devil. I turn away from the world. I turn away from the flesh. I turn away from my own selfish desires. I repent, God. Cleanse me, Lord. Purify me. Wash me, God. In my spirit, my soul, my body, my mind, my mouth, my thoughts. Just wash me clean. Lord, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. You died on Calvary Cross for me, for my sins. And on the third day, God raised you from the dead. Jesus, I receive you into my life as Lord and Savior. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your pardon right now. Thank you, God, for saving me. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, your sins have been forgiven. You are a new creation in Christ. 
If you prayed that prayer, you are now a born again Christian. God have wiped your slate clean. If you were to die the next second, you'll open your eyes in heaven. Paul said, absent from this body, I'll be present with the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter five verse 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We love you guys. We want you to make it into heaven. If you've given your life to Christ this morning, if you listen to this video and surrendered your life to Jesus, I want you to type under this video, Pastor Sean, that's me. I've surrendered my life to Jesus. I'm a new Christian. My sins have been forgiven. And thank you for telling me the truth. He loves you and we love you, but no one can love you like Jesus. He'll never leave you, friend. He will never forsake you. He will be with you to the end. Keep listening to these broadcasts so we can teach you the word of God. And as you listen to these, God will use it to strengthen you and bring direction and clarity in your life. Are you listening to me? We care about you. We want you to make it into heaven. That's our goal. The goal of these broadcasts is to encourage you, but to lead you into heaven through the word of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed into the ministry, into the kingdom of God, to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. Paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. Info at seanpinder.net. And for tax purposes, you must email us your name and mailing address. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. The dollar sign Sean Pinder ministries you can also mail your donations into the ministry just remember to make your checks and money orders out to sean pinder ministries p.o box 2726 mckinney texas 75070 never forget me and my beautiful wife pastor amy we love you we appreciate you we believe in god with you for your miracle for your breakthrough and for your turnaround Tune in again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.